Hello from Gardening at Twensa here in Ireland and this video is a greenhouse tour. So it's the 21st of October today and I'm going to bring you around my greenhouse and show you most of the plants that are in it. So an extra long video. And why the extra long video? It's because we're celebrating the nearly anniversary of when this channel started four years ago. It was the 3rd or 4th of November and my very first video on the channel was such a greenhouse video as I'm going to give you now. So after everything had been packed in for winter, just showing you the plants in here. So do come with me and let's have a look at the greenhouse for this anniversary video. Here we go with the extra long greenhouse video and I'm just stepping into the greenhouse now and thinking on my feet as to how I'm going to do this. I suppose I should start with the quick pan of this side of the greenhouse where the staging is underneath all the stuff in the middle and then big plants which are along the left hand side and unfortunately we seem to have lost the light but never mind there you go okay so I'm going to start up here at the top left and we have a the sensory light has just come on down there we have salvia leucantha which is still in flower and I like to keep a big plant of this because it really is a beauty when it gets going. Tender of course so it has to come in for the winter. And here we have Albizia, the chocolate one with the dark foliage. So a tender tree here in Ireland which needs protection and pretty much lives in the greenhouse. In front we have Brugmansia sanguinea which is quite a cold hardy Brugmansia but of course not cold tardy enough to actually put outdoors and this one has lots of blooms and in fact this is the only Brugmansia that is really worth growing in my climate I've come to the conclusion after trying for so many years anyway loads and loads of flowers on this one so we can expect a big flowering soon just a pity that it takes so late it takes so long for it to actually you know get around to it but um, yeah next we have two bananas two musa bananas which I grew from seed and tiger stripes variety I believe can't think of the species name but they live in the greenhouse and I've cut up most of their leaves um, they, they had been planted in the garden during the summer and now they've been dug up and brought in Next door to it we have Roldana and this one is supposed to have big felty leaves but it has been underwater this summer which means it has fewer leaves and less felty. We have an Aeonium down there and here we have Aristia which is a South African plant that produces blue spires of flowers eventually. Mine hasn't done so yet. So there you go. Over here we have my very first Brugmansia and this is a double white and in good years this has flowered reasonably well with for me but it does have a problem in that because the flowers are double the inner flower very often doesn't descend and um, yeah and therefore the flower just rots before it gets a chance to get going which is a terrible shame anyway um, here we have a Solanum. This is the Mauritanian Solanum with the blue flowers, as far as I recall, and two very tall Brugmansias that had done diddly squat this summer. Not a single flower, and I, I mean, they cost me a lot of money. They were <laughs> proper named varieties. I think I might try and sell those next year.
this next plant is Solandra and it's a kind of climber which hasn't done very much for me but it doesn't take up a whole lot of space so I've kept it for a few years. Uh, more aeoniums and here is my biggest protea. This is the one that flowers regularly every year and well I think we probably have flowers again this year just because well yeah it's a bit hard to tell yet at this stage but it really is quite reliable. So now I'm moving down away from the door. <laughs> we have um, some citrus that definitely need feeding. We have the Chinese banana. Oh no, this is a uh, Musa Basho. Not doing so well. It's not terribly big, but in time that will get quite large. And behind we have that Chinese um, banana, the Lassio Carpa. This is the one I looked for in France one year and eventually found. And here, Canna Musifolia. Beautiful specimen I got from Helen Dillon with the Tibuchina, that's this purpley flowered one. Just deciding to drop its flowers on my new bubble wrap. Um, Pagonia luxuriance and my tree fern, Cyathea, the Dixonia Cyathea, doing really well. We have here another Canna musifolia. There's the tree fern in there. And behind two Forcrea palmieri, which are big spiky plants, and eventually they'll throw up a flower spike, which will mean the end of the plant. So I'm not looking forward to that anytime soon. They can continue to grow like that for as long as they care to. I'm happy with that. In front we have um, seed grown. <coughs> Fuchsia boliviana, and this is the Alba one, the Alba form. And no flowers on it as yet. Um, took, it's been, they've been growing for a couple of years, so we'll have to see. We may need a bit longer to actually get to flowering size. I have another three, I think, somewhere in the greenhouse. Across the back of the greenhouse, we have my proteas, grown from seed several years ago. And a few tall plants there. There's a Calancho, there's an Aeonium, there's a Fuchsia I've got at the Bloom Show earlier this year and it's suffered badly from drought. Down below we have some succulents, some Aloas that were grown from seed, that one there, little ho Hoya over there on the left. And moving here we have a Solanum Quitensa grow from seed this year. I'm going to see how that one comes through. And my Desis, which are possibly too dry for this time of the year. I might put a little bit of water in there. I don't like how dry they look. <laughs> Down below we have oh yeah. In Inulatera. There should be a TH in there. Plant I got from Jimmy Blake. And yeah, and this is my Corsican Aroid, the <clears throat> there's its proper name Helichorosaurus. And this one really is a stinker when it gets going. And down below, we have um, I think they're Nerines. And over here, some various other potted things. I think what we have at the back is Canna pistache, pan, pan, panache, which is a kind of dwarf canna, quite pretty and quite easy to grow because I don't do well with cannas, generally speaking. So it's good to have one that does well. Moving over here, this corner is dominated by this plant here. And there's a smaller version of it. And this is Bart Bartlettina sordida, which makes a giant tree with a blue umbel-like flowers. 
really quite magnificent when it gets going. In the corner we have Geranium Medarensa and Monocarpic Geranium, which produces a gorgeous trunk. Trevisia palmata, a plant that I grew from seed. And this is the only one I have left. It has suffered from scale. I'll need to give it another going over soon, I think. Um, and just kind of moving back here now, because we can see in the corner a Sanchez, Sanchez, a giant Madeiran dandelion. I think this is the Madaransa one, all right. Another of those Fuchsia Boliviana. Uh, perhaps this is the Alba form or the red form, I'm not sure. And another one of them there. And an Aeonium in the corner. So I guess I'm not quite sure where to take you next, but perhaps a look up the lower shelf would be in order. And actually, you know, I have too many succulents in here to even mention. Oh dear, I am not sure where to start. Lots of epiphyllums. And this thing here is a lovely thing. If I could find the label, it would be grand, wouldn't it? Cotyledon. Speciosum, I think. Really pretty plant. Um, this is, uh, I think it's a euphorbia. It's not really doing very well. But I guess not everything can. Um, this is a Hatiora rosea. Produces lovely pink flowers in um, spring and various epithelums at the back there. Moving along we have a stipelia and this one flowered for me last year. I'm sure I made a video when it did. It has really stinky flowers but it's an enormous plant and it decided not to flower for me this year despite getting good light so I don't know what its story is. This is the seedling monkey puzzle tree I got from Lynn, Desert Plants of Happiness channel, um, or Desert Plants of Avalon uh, channel, and it was potted on this year, but it's quite small. Epiphyllums at the back, and then crawling up here on my knees, we have some more stuff. I'm getting tired now. <laughs> Uh, we have some uh, more aloes I grew from seed and we have that little agave. These are pops of the parent agave majestica which is a wonderful specimen and has a great history. <laughs> this is one that came back from France on my knee one year when we went on holiday camping and uh, these are the pops of it. We'll see the parent plant when we get to the top. And then what have we got along here? I have a few primulas. These are the marginata types with the white dust on them. And just here we have a bunch of little seedlings. So we've got uh, three types really. We've got the tree tomato, which is that one. We've got mountain papaya, both of which I'm growing for their leaves. And then we also have Scylla madarensa, which produces a wonderful blue flower when it eventually flowers. All of these grown from seed. I think this must be year three for the Scylla. It was seed I collected when I was in Madeira. And here beside it we have a grass tree from Australia. Um, I originally had a bunch of these, but I only have one left. So we'll see if I can get that one to do anything sensible. They are so slow growing, it's unreal. And here we have a species Dahlia, Excelsia. This one gets enormous, but to tell the truth, I have enough of enormous Dahlias that don't flower. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and in here in this corner, we have some begonias, various types of begonias. That one there in flower is the one that I picked up at the Bloom Show this year. And here at the very top of the greenhouse we have my Spermania Africana 
and this is in bud again. Look at that. It's a fantastic plant grown for its enormous leaves, but the winter flowers are really a wonderful thing to behold and a real bonus. Down below we have the parent of that agave mediopicta, which seems to be doing quite well since it was repotted. And this one here is bulbean, um, which probably needs potting on because it didn't flower for me much this year. So that's a bit disappointing. So now we've moved up to the top of the shelving. We were down there and we've moved up. And in the very corner we have variegated aeonium. Alocasia that I grew from berries, originally collected four years ago. It's doing quite well. And, well, some regulars, you know, these plants feature time and time again because they're so good looking. This is a new addition. It's an agave. And I just love the colours in the leaf. It's got like four different colours in there. Very, very attractive. And here's that little tiger paw that flowered yellow not very long ago. Um, Echeveria Compton's Carousel I featured so many times because it's such a great plant. Uh, Cyclamen just coming into bud now. And here at the back we have Veltimia, which I pr predict it will start flowering soon. Flowers yellow, this particular one. No, pink, sorry. Um, and, well, actually, shall we have a look? I've got three distinct bulbs now. No, I don't see any sign yet, but I, I imagine they'll come. I've got some nerines here and up here. This now, this was a present from Jimmy Blake when he came to visit me a while ago. And it's a Roldana, but it's a subspecies one that has this kind of reddish leaf. And it's really quite a bit more attractive than the regular green ones. So I'm delighted to have that. I lost mine last year, so I was delighted when Jimmy gave me a new one. And we have uh, Epiphyllum acarmanii with two buds there. Which are definitely thinking about flowering. <laughs> it's just such an ugly plant though. It flops around the place. But the flower is like when it produces the flowers, they're so absolutely magnificent that you can forgive it a multitude. Okay, so um, agave attenuata bought in Madeira, yes, brought from Madeira. Um, this kind of chrysula has done so well this summer. It really obviously was just looking for some hot weather to get it going. And behind it, Hymanthus albifloss, or the shaving brush plant, which produces these flowers that really look like a, a shaving brush. And they're very yellow. <laughs> they stain easily. Uh, here we have Crufea, which is a recent addition to my collection, also given to me by Jimmy Blake. And these are very cute little flowers. Super, super things. Buffone in the background there. Syningia lucata, they're the uh, greyish one. And down here the Dudlia, which is a North American plant. Needs potting on next year now, but as you can see, it's covered in this kind of mealy. Getting a, quite a mixture going here with the yellow and the white from the <laughs> various plants. Um, a cactus that has worrying yellow going on down here. I wonder, is it just too cold in the greenhouse? And another sunchus. This one is the arboreous one. So it's a different giant dandelion to previous one I showed you and some more small things down there at the back we have oh yes this is an experiment this is the dragon tree which I bought in Spain this year and actually I need to check out what kind of minimum temperatures it needs because 
I'm feeling it's um, not going to like five degree minimum, it'll be more a kind of ten jobby. Anyway, we'll see. Aeonium's here. A very <laughs> dehydrated looking, oh gosh, that so needs some water. Uh, Irsani, Irsani, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And Jimmy Blake gave me as well. I will go and get some uh, water now and tend to it. And here we have a lovely pelagonium, and this is the one called Ardens that produces small red flowers. Really gorgeous. Um, down the front we have the species pelagonium old man live forever. Lovely one with the sturdy trunk. And coral cactus hanging down. Isn't that pretty? never flowered for me but it earns its keep just by virtue of the interesting foliage and leaves really really nice um, another aeonium doesn't look like an aeonium but that is an aeonium we have my biggest pelagonium this is the one that has flowers like rosebuds and I've taken all the flowers off so you can't see we have a variegated tip china here and at the back we have a this is a South American plant, I believe, called, there we go, Megascapasma. There you go. Anyway, from a cutting a few years ago, uh, Plectrantis argentia, are those um, cute little flowers. Very orchid-like, and as somebody pointed out, like the um, stenoglottis orchids. Very nice. Um, this is the large scented pelagonium. Really interesting smell. Oh, down here we have some of my amorphophallus, which are just drying out before I pot them on. That's a begonia. And look at this. This is from Hymanthus albifloss. When I was removing dead leaves, I found these little bulbs, which I should pot on and hopefully will be able to grow new plants from. And here we have the Sikas palm. And down here we're back to the Bartlettinas here in the corner. So we're doing well, we're getting there. Okay, so just turning around here, just the whole central section of the green house that we haven't dealt with. And this main table here is the orchids table, the cold orchids, with um, cymbidiums here. Quite large cymbidiums, and they have new growths. Plenty of new growths down below, but I can't really tell whether there are any sign of flower spikes just yet. Um, that's a Cylogeny cristata. This is another, uh, this is Cymbidium Cali Night Skeezerland. Cylogeny flaccida that Alberto sent me from Italy. And, well, the other one's around the other side. There's the other Cylogeny cristata, the one that got too much sun. And then moving along here, we have, well, that's an impatience with some aeoniums, some hedicium gingers, my puya, oh the beast, the beast. I thought I should repot this this year, but I'm really scared of it, to tell the truth. I mean, it's got teeth that are going to tear. I mean, it's bad enough just removing kind of dead growth without having to actually repot this thing so I read up about it and found out that actually you know they do better in tight pots so we're going to just leave it for a bit longer I think and there in front we have my pelagonium table with the uh, citrus the orange which is the one that my son Josh gave me as a present a few years back and it's still got some sooty, sooty mould on its leaves, but, um, well, it had to come in now, so, so it goes. The pelagonium is being kept quite dry at the moment. And here, on this table here, what we have is my 
Aeonium propagations and basically <laughs> when I dug up my Aeoniums to bring them in this year I realised that I'd been keeping them quite badly because what I'd done the last few years is dug them up and shoved them just under the tables down there and the things had been stretching for light with the result that the stems grew very crooked. So this year I decided to do a job on them and what I did was just cut off like all of the rosettes and as much stem as was straight and just plunged it into soil like that. Now anybody who grows aeoniums will realise that they propagate really easily and in fact if you were to just cut the, the, the stem and leave it in a cold greenhouse in winter it would even grow roots just like that. So I potted them up like this without watering and I'm just going to leave them and I'm quite sure that come spring I'm going to have pots full of roots for all of these and basically they'll start to grow up then and just lot look a whole lot better than they have been um, with their stretching and twisting and all those unfortunate movements that are not very attractive on the plant. And now we're going down the underneath of the centre of the greenhouse, if <laughs> bear with me. Okay, just before we do, a quick glance over here and we have some pelagoniums that have, uh, and mealy and whitefly and stuff, and uh, also um, a uh, primula marginata that has the same. And I'm actually going to treat these before I move them in. They've been there a bit longer <laughs> than they should, you know. Um, underneath the uh, tables we have the plants I was propagating for my long border, so the Crocosmia and the Echiums and the T-Rex and I made separate videos about propagating all of these plants and at the very top here we have an Amorphophallus which I'm waiting to die back and then I can dry store its bulbs. We saw the other bulbs um, further up there, but this one is still going strong. Nice sturdy stem and actually I think this is the one that flowered for me this year which explains why it's a bit behind the others. It's just had less of a season so I'm happy it's still going that it will get a chance to sustain goodness from the sun and hopefully pump that into the bulb and do something good for me next year. Wouldn't be great if it flowered again next year. Well it would. Now just there is an Ansete banana and that will be a separate video. So we just leave that there. And then under here some Hedicium uh, gingers. I have a lot fewer than I ever had before. Thankfully I sold a lot of them last year. And under the table here we have Amaryllis belladonna, one of which you caught in one of my videos, and a loa, possibly not the best place for that. Some more gingers, uh, Eucamus, which has been cut back, and oh yes, my clivia. Now this is my big clivia, and it had an accident this year. It got put out in the sun, <laughs> and all the leaves burnt frazzled actually it was a sorry sight so when it came time for moving it back into the greenhouse I had to remove so many leaves because they just looked unsightly but actually you know there seems to be enough left so I think I think it'll be fine now I should have stopped watering this a while ago but it was outdoors so it got watered by the by the rain but I'm officially stopping watering now and this usually flowers without much bother just here in the greenhouse so I hope that this year will be no exception. Okay and that kind of brings me tumbling to the end of my extra long greenhouse video which I hope you've enjoyed in celebration of almost four years of this channel and I know I didn't actually cover every plant in the greenhouse but I, well, I think you would have all been sick of the sound of my voice 
if I'd actually gone through each and every one. Plus it's difficult to be original when we've got so many plants here. But hopefully the ones that I didn't touch on, I'll touch on in the next video. And I hope you liked it. And um, if you haven't subscribed to me already, I really uh, hope that you will. And check back for, well, lots more plant and garden fun. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye.